Well, hello, everybody. It is Friday, which means it's the Dennis and Andy Show movie review that we do just for you, our lovely viewers and audience. We went and saw last night Godzilla Kong. Wasn't the original title Godzilla vs. Kong, and they changed it to where it's no, just like there's... No, no, because the last one was Godzilla. Oh, that's right. Kong this is just... So this, this is, is like Godzilla X Kong. <laughs> This is new empire. This is like a Marvel team up. It really, it really was. Um, I, I will be honest, going into this movie after seeing the trailer, I, I have very low expectations um, going going into this movie. Uh, I thought the uh, the last one was very solid. It was a really decent movie, um, but uh, yeah, getting a souped up uh, Kong with the big power gauntlet and stuff and i went oh my did we just go down a video game rabbit hole so the question i was is, waiting to see you know when he got and we, guys we're going to do non-spoiler and then we'll we'll throw the graphic back up and do a spoiler but this isn't a spoiler that he gets that big you know uh mechanical boost to his arm um i was looking for uh uh the insignia that said stark tech that's what i was looking for yeah, that usually comes up. This the the premise of this one is there's two ancient uh, titans, Godzilla, Kong, two of probably everybody's favorites. And last time they fought, and uh, we could say Godzilla won that one, uh, but now they have a new clash of epic uh, proportions um, as humans unravel that their intertwined origins and connection to Skull Island, the humans, and this inner earth. And, um, you know, it was interesting seeing how they're building upon, you know, the last movie to uh, world build. And surprisingly, in my mind, they, they did a nice job of at least putting some of the pieces together. Now, I will say this before we really delve into it. This was not a perfect movie in, in any regard, but... It was a visual spectacle. It was beautiful. It, it was. Yeah, I mean, it was. It was a visual spectacle. You know, Kong uh, is has his new home down there in Inner Earth. And, uh, you know, he's still on the hunt trying to find more of his kind. Um, he, uh, he, he's down there doing that. Godzilla's up above and, uh, you know, on our regular earth and he's taking care of threats up above he he uses the roman coliseum as a big doggy bed uh, a godzilla bed where he curls up right in the coliseum which just that just that i'm like well he's destroyed the innards of that just because godzilla's not light and it's not like the coliseum floor is what it was you know way long ago <laughs> Yeah, no, that that is true, and we will really touch on more of this stuff in the in the spoilers because yeah. there's a lot we got to unpack with that. But director Adam Wingard really did continue on the monster verse building, and yeah. I thought he was very successful with it. Uh, they brought back Rebecca Hall, uh, Brian Tyree Henry, who's just become one of my my favorite actors. They bring in Dan Stevens as the new vet, and uh, he was kind of funny. I really yeah. enjoyed him. And they did bring on uh, Haley Hoddle. You know, she reprises her role as the last of the, the deaf race. And um, uh, they explored all of those. And I, I really enjoyed, you know, the relationship uh, be, between mother and now daughter. It was, it was, it was good, but I got to say there's a one time where, you know, they're, they're traveling somewhere and, uh, the mother there, Rebecca says something to the daughter, you know, sign language and stuff. And of course, you know, has the closed captioning and she says something like, you know, you're perfect just the way you are or something like that. Right. And I was going to lean over to you, but this theater is actually really crowded. So uh, I didn't. Usually if it's just Dennis and I and a couple other people, I'll lean over and interject something. So she goes, you're perfect just the way you are. And I want to have her tag it with, 
Well, you know, except for the fact you can't hear or speak. Other than that, you were literally perfect just the way you are. Yes. Yes. It, yes. I, but, I, so I, I, one thing I got, because I, I don't remember from the first one, and they did make a, you know, one of the characters uh, made a made a point of commenting on her hair. Was her hair longer in the first one? Because I don't remember. Um, I'm assuming it was because the guy was like, oh, you you cut your hair. And, and yeah, I like your highlight. Yeah, it was, it was not that short. But, so, um, you know, I like the guy they brought in that played like, I mean, he was a, he was a vet for like Kong, but he was also, you know, a scientist and, and whatnot. I liked him. I mean, it was the typical tropes you had. You know, the 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 main character, actress, actor was Rebecca, and she's, you know, the strong female. And then you've got, you know, the, the sidekick. Uh, what was the dude's name? The black guy that was from the first Brian one? Tyree Henry. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. You know, I, I, I enjoy his character, but he's that typical, he's a smart guy, but he's also kind of like not as uh, strong-willed in a way, you know, he's he's, he's kind of second fiddle and he but, should you know, relief. yeah but then also the thing was though the vet slash scientist was kind of comic relief as well yeah you know i yeah, thought and, and he was surprisingly fun and, he was. And, and you know the thing that i always have against most of these kong movies godzilla minus one being the exception is you don't really care about any of the humans and I could almost say that about this one, but again, the relationship was there. That was kind of fun. All the little people that get crushed throughout there, and there are a lot of them. We'll really talk about that in the in the spoiler section. Um, it was good. It, it was. It, it's what you expect from a Godzilla movie, and that's yeah. The thing that I all mean, Godzilla the, movies suffer from. So the basic gist is, you know, Kong's down there. You've seen the trailer. This little child for lack of a better word a uh, red orange type uh gorilla who he befriends and then you see there's this whole tribe basically of uh apes and you know they have face paint and stuff and body paint and the leader is just this you know from a body type you know when you design a character you want to think about silhouettes so when you see this leader type, unlike Kong, who's just like a freaking uh, barrel, you know, literally takes that name barrel chest, you know, this leader is more wide shouldered, thinner type. Um, I mean, for, for a good section of this, when you were in that realm of under earth or whatever, inner earth, I was thinking it's planet of the apes. Um and then, of course, they introduced this new Titan that the leader of this pact of apes controls. And uh, which, of course, you know, we'll talk about more in the spoiler section. But uh, that's basically the point of why Godzilla and Kong have to team up to basically stop this this whacked out crazy ass ape leader who is controlling this one Titan. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, just to reiterate visually, it was stunning. Uh, the acting was fine. It definitely had some moments where you were like, oh, in it, which we'll talk about in the spoiler section. Uh, I guess we can give our grade for it. Cause you know, for this section, it's just overall thoughts and we don't like to delve in more of what you saw in the trailer. That's why yeah. it's not spoiler. Yep, your turn. Oh, is it mine to go first? Okay. Um, man, I was really going back and forth with this. Like, I had an initial reaction leaving the movie last night with what I was going to grade it. And I was thinking about it more this morning. You know, this is kind of a, it, it's a weak grade, but it's it's like a 5-5 five five for me. Wow. You know, I could have, I, you know, it was visually cool, but I think, and we've said this before, target audience isn't necessarily me. I think the target audience would be great for like uh, 
basically 10 and up 10 to 10 to early 20s maybe early 30s because they're more into the flashiness and not thinking through like story stuff more you know what i mean and yeah. i'm you know just getting older and more sophisticated i do think about story stuff and things making sense and stuff like that and I think Godzilla minus one proved that you can do a really successful movie with all the cool visuals and have that stuff in there. So that's, that's what I'm giving it. All right. I I'm a little bit different on this one. Um, I think these movies suffered from the fact that we just saw Godzilla minus one and it was such a great movie in every aspect that this one completely changes things. I enjoyed it. I, I said I went into this with very low expectations. And uh, it was better than I anticipated. So did I have fun? I had a lot of fun with this movie. We did see it in 3D. Mm -hmm. And the 3D was very good. There are a lot of criticisms that I have that we'll talk about. But overall, I enjoyed it. I had fun throughout the entire movie. I was never really bored. It was a little slow to start with but I was never bored. I'm giving this one a surprising 7.0. I really wow. enjoyed it. The question would be, would I see it again? You know what? I would watch this back to back with uh, Godzilla versus Kong. And uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I'd probably see this one again. So yeah, there we go, guys. And, I'd probably uh, have to, I would, if I saw it again, I would probably have to, the only way I would probably do it is watching the first one so you can roll right into this one i mean there is time passage between the two movies it's not like this picks up the next yeah. day no, but it, it was just pure fun it, was it, it and fun. it was it was popcorn it was cool looking if you turn your brain off it's the typical popcorn flick yeah you know it was fun but at the same time you know just to finish my my thought if for some reason we were so busy or i was so busy and i didn't get a chance to see it in theaters uh, I wouldn't be kicking myself. And then if I didn't get a chance to see it until it hit streaming or whatever months from now, once again, I'd probably, w I'd watch it, but I wouldn't be kicking myself that I missed it. So. Yeah. Our friend, uh, Bud Root, he went with us yesterday and he and I stood outside for a while and talked about it. I uh, to get his, he loved it. He, he oh, said yeah. it wasn't perfect, but he of course absolutely loved it. So he really enjoyed it, but let's see what everybody else thinks. IMDb, they have a 6.7. Um, so, yep, we got scores out for this one. So, overall, um, like I said, IMDb is always a little low, but they're right there. Okay, now this is kind of what I expect. Rotten Tomatoes. Critics hated it. 56%. Not at all surprised. Critics did not like this movie. Audience, however... 93 percent wow yeah and they've already got over 250 reviews in it so uh hey what what can i say the the audience really had fun with this well there you go so uh like subscribe and share this is the part where we throw this graphic up to let you know we're going to talk spoilers if you don't want to hear them uh get on out of here thank you for watching and uh, it's spoiler time. You know, one thing I kept thinking throughout the movie uh, when they would show Kong full body like that in that graphic is I was like, oh, my God, now I get it. Dennis is built like Kong. If you look at Kong's inseam compared to his uh, the rest of his body, that's like Dennis. I was like, wow, if if you could take the pants that you would put on Kong and just proportionately shrink them down, Dennis and Kong could switch they, pants. They, they really did, uh, you know, take his dimensions right after me. I must have met Adam Wingard at some point, and he went, yeah. hey, Kong, I like that. Big, big barrel chest, it's monkey right. arms, short inseam, pissy attitude. It's Dennis. Dennis uh, is King Kong. Yeah, a great, uh, a great lineman for the NFL, but that's right. You know, I, I will say this, um, you know, we have to talk a, a, a couple of things that are, are important about this. Um, number one, we got to talk collateral damage. Oh, my God. 
Good Lord. You thought Avengers Endgame was bad. Oh. With, or, or Batman versus Superman was bad. Dude, they just take this to another level. Like, the fact that they're like, hey, Godzilla's cool. He saves us. He helps the planet from these other titans and stuff. Yeah, that might be the case, but he doesn't do it. Like, if he's fighting a titan, okay, I get it. Shit's going to get fucked up. But even when he gets up out of the Coliseum to go to where he has to go with his Godzilla spider sense, he knocks shit over and doesn't give a F. And it's like, dude, it, you don't know if those buildings were empty. And even if they were empty, thanks for the amount of rebuilding we have to do, especially in Rome, where it's like, how many classic structures or structures are there that you're going to fuck up? You know, they really did a good job where he goes into the water and he's swimming through and he's in the canal and every bridge, bam, 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 bam. One right after another. Cars are on the bridges. People oh, yeah. are on the bridges. Godzilla's like, I got to go. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's just it. I, I, I mean, every city he popped up in, it was like crush, crush, smash. It is Godzilla walking through us is like us walking over through an anthill. It just is. He doesn't even think twice, doesn't even notice. And, you know, it's kind of probably realistic. Uh, but, you know, that does really should let the fact of like, uh, what what should we do to protect ourselves? And they have a nice well, little intro with uh, Brian, um, t uh, Tyree Henry, at the beginning, his character is talking. He's got a podcast and he's talking about insurance. How do you insure yourself? We have Gargatua, the insurance company. We care about you. And I was and like, who could even who could even afford that? You yeah. know? It's like, it's, it's like their trade-off is, well, he does so much to help us with the other Titans and stuff, but we sacrifice so many, many lives and damage. I'm like, I don't know if, I, if it was me, I'd be coming up with the solution to just take Godzilla out and any of these monstrosities out for good. So we can not deal with the repercussions of what these dudes bring. Well, I, I think they've tried that and it's failed because we have nothing that can take out Godzilla. I know, I know. It, but it's, but it, it, I'm saying it, it's just a, a very obvious thing that has to be addressed. If they do a third movie in this trilogy, somehow that's got to be addressed. I tell you what, I'm moving to like, if it's me, I'm like, like we live in Charlotte and I'm like, nope, we're not safe here. You never know. I might have to look at the map and be like, maybe Montana, something like that. I mean, you just don't know. Yeah. But definitely cities. Get out of the cities. Yeah. You're just screwed. So one of the other big things in this for you old Godzilla fans is they do a really nice job of, of bringing some member berries back. And it, it was done in a convoluted way, but... They bring back Mothra, and I didn't want to talk about this in the uh, non-spoiler because there was only the slightest hint in the trailer that there could be a tie-in, and there is. And uh, when they bring back Mothra and she comes up, it was she looked fantastic. I mm -hmm. love that. It was just a huge, great throwback. Mothra was one of my favorite early uh, Godzilla movies. And, uh, you know, they, they did great, uh, great with with the reintroduction of Mothra into this version of the franchise. They did. I thought Mothra was really cool. But this this movie, once again, it's like, OK, so the star of the movie, the leader is the Rebecca. That's the actress's name. Right. Or is that the character's name? I don't remember. Oh, Rebecca. Rebecca Hall's her real name. Right. So she's the lead. And then, you know, down there in inner earth, they discover this whole tribe of people that are are basically the same people that uh, the the little girl who looks like a young teen now that can talk to Kong. She was the last remaining one on upper earth, I guess. Well, there's this whole tribe of them down there in inner earth. The leader of that tribe is a chick. Um, you know, 
one of the main scientists up above that Rebecca talks to is a chick. And I'm just like, can't we just have one dude as a leader in this thing, you know, doing stuff? Just one. And then Godzilla, you know, his power is blue when he, you know, uh, does Godzilla power and it goes up through him and he's glowing blue. But he goes out to the Arctic or wherever and uh, he's just absorbing all this other power. And now his power is pink and pink is not a strong color. It is not a strong, formidable color. Red, if you're going to go that way, red is. Red shows anger. It shows, you know, red is great for like conflict. And it's powerful. Pink is not. So when Godzilla's powering up and he's now pink, I'm just like, oh, not powerful at all uh, looking. Yeah. No, there, there definitely were, and there's also, uh, so the, the one really cool thing I can say, and then we'll get into some of the negative, was the exposition in a lot of this was kind of weak. There was, some, the dialogue wasn't anything fantastic, but they had so many silent scenes where Kong is down in the new part of Middle Earth going through and they have, he's meeting these other apes and the apes were trying to kill him. And it was great, but it was all silent because it was all verbal, yeah, just visual yelling. communication, right. grunting. And honestly, I thought that was some of the best parts of the movie yeah. where it, it was completely silent of dialogue. And it was some of the most meaningful and impactful. And I really, I really appreciated those parts. Yeah, well, so did I. I thought those worked really well because just from the grunting and the, the primal screaming of the apes and stuff, you knew what was going on and their body language and stuff. So they did a great job storytelling wise there. You could follow it. You're like, look, you can do a whole movie with just Kong against this other tribe of apes with just that and you'd know what was going on yeah um the elephant so, in the room we have to talk about though was the gauntlet <laughs> well yeah the gauntlet so you know when he meets these other tribe of apes there's this new titan and the one leader of that tribe i was talking about that has a totally different body shape he's thinner looks more agile and stuff just as big as kong um he wears kind of a uh, crisscrossing his body. It looks like basically a spinal cord of some creature that he fastened into like this belt. But at the end of it, and he uses it to whip around and stuff. At the end of it is this blue uh, triangle shaped pointy, you know, looking ice gem that he controls this other Titan with who basically has power like Godzilla. He breathes stuff out, but it freezes stuff. So it's like ice breath, right? And he controls it with whatever that thing is at the end of it that's blue. So, you know, they did it so it connects with the color of the creature and stuff. And, you know, he can ride the creature and all that. Well, anyhow, this creature uses his ice breath and Kong puts his arm up to deflect it and it freezes his arm. And then Kong goes, and all the ice burst off. But he's basically got uh, frostbite on his hand and, and lower arm. So, you know, thank God that they've been working on it for years uh, because of Mecha Godzilla from the first movie. If they ever needed it, they could build like, I guess they were alluding to Mecha Kong. And it just so happens that an in inner earth, that's where they were working on it. And this workable piece they had was uh, the arm, the forearm attachment. So basically they were building an Iron Man suit for Kong. Well, they had the arm part that they could give to Kong now to help out with this frostbitten, weak-ass arm. Kind of like, you know, the Incredible Hulk in Endgame had his arm messed up from the Infinity Gauntlet and stuff. So, uh, you know, lickety split. We're well, able to 
th that is ahead. what we talked about beforehand was how are they because it was in the trailer and i was just like oh no how are they gonna do it you know how long was it gonna take them were they just gonna build it you know that was the one thing we talked about before the movie I will say they at least gave it an explanation. Oh, yeah. it's there. We just had to get it. But man, he managed to take that ship somehow, get all the way back to that place in the hidden bunker. And then he was right back there and it was on there. And I was like, oh, okay. This whole part with the uh, arm is just nothing but plot armor. And, yeah, because uh, like when, you know, they're talking about building this thing. Well, if you're building something like that to fit, you know, Kong, you would have to have something, you know, basically like a mannequin of Kong to work over to build the tech to the proper size and proportion and all that stuff. And, you know, obviously they don't allude to any of that. They just allude that this thing was in development. And yeah, he flies back over to the bunker in Inner Earth, which was totally destroyed, except for this part. He gets it. He flies back. It drops down and it's very Iron Man esque. It just attaches and does the whole stuff. And then when he, when finally in the epic battle up on uh, Kong has to get help from Godzilla. So, you know, he goes through one of the portal things uh, up in Egypt where the pyramids are, which we'll get to. And when he's fighting with that gauntlet, it's very Iron Man because. You know, plates change and stuff. Oh, I got to throw this super punch. You know, and then talk about collateral damage. They took out like three fucking pyramids. Yeah. They took out three. You know, it's not like, oh, they ruined a house. Well, just rebuild the house. It's only been there for 40 years. Who cares? No, they took out like three pyramids. You just don't go. Well, Egyptians just rebuild them. No. Yeah. Archaeologists were like, no. That's why I'm saying at some point that has to be addressed in the movies because, you know, and I'm okay that they did that as long as it gets addressed at some point because it's it's too big. But now with that being said, overall, like I said, there's some plot armor points. There's things that didn't make sense. But I always look at it. When I, when I walked out of the theater, did I have fun? Was I happy? The answer is yes. The 3D was great. I did see somebody complaining how they were jostled around in their IMAX movie. And I'm like, how would you get jostled around unless you were in the 4D experience? Because, right. I mean, there, there was nothing like that. But overall, it was just a fun movie. And, you know. I would say give it a give it a shot. Uh, you got some family stuff this weekend. Go take your kids to it. It's a uh, fun. Yeah, I mean, it's it. it, it, thirteen. It's under two hours. Yeah, that's just it. And there's no after credit, mid credit. Yep. It is like I said. I walked out of it last night, and my thought was to give it like around a seven. And just the more I thought about it and stuff, it I just worked it down to the five five that I gave it. Um, you know, it's worth a matinee. Uh, I, you know, I fought Graham Nolan for, I, or I do, I fault Graham Nolan for my way of thinking because now I'm thinking too critically about these popcorn flicks. Thanks, Graham. Um, because I like Godzilla vs. Kong, and then Graham started pointing out all this stuff that now I think about, and I'm like, damn you, Graham. Yeah. Thanks. Well, like so, I said, and it's on the heels of Godzilla minus one. In right. my opinion, the best Godzilla movie ever made, and it's going to be compared to it, and rightfully so, because that was a masterpiece. And you know what else is a masterpiece? Core Drath the Awakening. We can say that because behind the scenes, we're working on it, writing, drawing. Uh, this book is coming to you. The campaign launches April 13th, 14th, one of those days, Saturday or Sunday, that weekend. Guys, go sign up. When you sign up and back the book, you will get a free Adriana trading card drawn by me, colored by Kelsey Shannon, and front of the line shipping, which means when we go into fulfillment, your books will go out in the first week. So definitely sign up. Here's a better shot of the trading card. Of course, there's the main cover, cover A by me and Dan Lawless again. Uh, 
the homage cover. I did everything on it, pencils, inks, colors. And of course, the Bud Root variant cover, you're like, hey, wait a second. That seems familiar. That's because the first round he did Lilineth. And for this one, we said, let's go with the same type of feel and vibe, except we want these covers to line up next to each other with her in the proper proportion. She's taller than Lilina. So if you missed out on the first one by Bud, it will be an add-on for this campaign. Uh, so that's coming at you. We'll, of course, uh, show more stuff later when the campaign launches, but don't miss out. Go sign up. For those of you guys that back nice and tight the comic book art of Andy Smith, thank you so much. The book is at the printer now. The trading card is arriving from the printer tomorrow, and the sketchbook is also at the printer as well. So you've got that. We'll be back next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Maybe we'll have a guest. Maybe we won't. You'll just have to tune in to find out. Until then, everybody have a great weekend. Like, subscribe, and share. And bye-bye, everybody. Long and prosper. Gang sign. <laughs>